What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. We're moving on with our Hail Caesar faction review coverage and uh, we had uh, paused that a little while ago to uh, once we finished up the you know the sort of first half and um, uh, kind of ending with uh, early Imperial Romans and now moving into some of the later um, uh, ages uh, or a factions of antiquity here up through uh, dark ages and so on and so forth uh, that Hail Caesar covers. So the next one in line is uh, kind of a Roman list, right? Um, so the Palmyrans, uh, which is interesting because this list very specifically covers a short time period here, as it says in the description here, 259 to 273 AD. Um, it's an interesting list that provides us with some unique uh, uh, features uh, and you know some things that are familiar some that are going to be a little bit tougher to um, deal with so uh, and then here uh, there's a couple of uh, again these unique features so um, just to mention it here before we get into the actual uh, list itself so in a Palmyre an army every third division so again depending on the size of your games must be rated as freshly raised with the freshly raised rule applying to all units in it and a discount of one point per unit so we'll see that uh, when we work through the list here. So some things to help you guys out, um, and this was something I had to refresh myself on as well. So obviously the Palmyrian Empire, um, Oduantha, or Odenathus, I think, Zenobia, certainly, uh, the Battle of Emesa, Emei, and so on and so forth. So it's, again, an interesting composition here. Cavalry has to be at least a quarter of the army, um, as does infantry. And um, of that, we do have to, at some point in the army, have at least one unit of cataphracts, which, again, great unit, but um, just something that we do have to have as part of our cavalry. Uh, archers also have to be at least 20% of the infantry, so you got um, that uh, to factor in as well. And then the way the divisions are organized here, again, we saw that basically uh, four plus units have to be in a division, and then one in three has to be freshly raised there. And then skirmishers here can be 50% of the division um, as well. Uh, so just something to keep in mind there. So this list, again, does have some pretty solid units, but then overall, again, dealing with these sort of freshly raised troops is uh, going to be a little bit trickier to make that into an effective army overall. So uh, in a sense, you have a lot of sort of cannon fodder almost uh, that you're going to be required to take and somehow make use of. So ca uh, cataphracts, again, are going to be our heavy hitters, so um, using as many of those as possible might be uh, beneficial there if you just want... Um, something strong and mobile. So again, Clash 9, Sustain 6, 4 up morale save, 30 point, 34 points a pop. No other special rules or anything, but again, cat, Cataphracts will do what they do, and they also have the Contos. Um, we also have Caravan Guard Cataphract Camels, which, right, that's a, that's a mouthful right there. But armed with bows and spears, and as a small unit, we get one of those, and it's just so unique, uh, might actually be, you know, uh, worth trying out. So not going to be too special on the combat side there but again let's remember it's a small unit so in that sense it actually does kind of punch pretty decently uh six four there it does have short range of two and long of one um so again you have like a cataphract bow unit uh, on camels no less right so weird to sort of factor all those things together four up or uh, four up morale save and then only 23 points again remember it is a small unit so um it can certainly surprise i think uh depending on where it's employed but um remember it's not uh not a full-size unit, and uh, you're only going to have the one of, so uh, best employed uh, carefully there. Uh, we do have uh, horse archers in quantity here as small units, um, which I think is just a great way of running them, and they all have Parthian shot, so, I mean, uh, we've talked about that at length with other factions. Um, great to have that in quantity. Similarly, we have light cavalry with javelins as small units, and they have feign flight, and then right below it, and we'll kind of pause after that for a second, Arab uh, camel-mounted light cavalry with bows and javelins. Uh, so kind of the best of both worlds there, uh, uh, although just one unit there of them, but also a faint flight. So our cavalry package for this army um, is pretty damn solid overall. Really can't complain. There are lots of small units with special rules backed up by just some heavy hitting um, uh, cataphract uh, units there. Um, so yeah, plenty of faint flight, plenty of Parthian shot. So again, uh, a nice uh, component to that army. Or to the army there. Now the infantry side uh, again gets a little bit familiar, right? We have heavy infantry Roman legionaries um, armed with pila and swords. We know all about them and they're drilled here. Nothing fancier than that, but um, you can't really go wrong with that if that's your basic unit, right? We do have some other lighter options here. Medium infantry uh, auxiliaries or locally equipped spearmen. Again, your box standard um, medium infantry unit here. Um, so, but, and only just 23 points a pop there. So again, a nice thing to fill up, uh, space and, um, 
uh, you know, if you just want some diversity in your lists, if you don't want to just run Roman legionaries, you want to mix it up a little bit, that's a, a okay unit for sure. Uh, we also have medium infantry archers, so solid there. Um, no other special rules or anything like that. There are 24 points of pop, but having a normal sized archer unit that can mix it up a little bit um, is, is uh, not a bad thing either. So, um, and again, great uh, range stats for those guys. So we also have light infantry archers if we want a little bit more of a discount. Um, again, this, this list so far has, you know, packs plenty of ranged firepower and, you know, between the, the cataphracts and other things going on, and, you know, just, again, having Roman legionary units as your base sort of all around infantry unit, you know, it's, it's, uh, it'll do enough, especially if you use all this, uh, firepower to soften up enemies as they, um, come in, uh, or come in range of, uh, close combat and all that stuff. So the list does continue on a little bit here and we have some more things to look at. So here, um, we then have, um, uh, for the light infantry, um, it's kind of confusing here as it splits the page, but basically we can take, take those light infantry archers and make them a small unit for a pretty solid discount. Um, again, just depending on uh, your, your points that you have left and how you want to fill out your units and, you know, just space uh, as well. So um, having some small units is not a bad idea either. You still keep range of two and that's plenty um, and you don't really need them to be doing combat anyway. So that might be an option for the light infantry uh, archers there. Then, skirmishers, we have a, a decent package of those here. So again, this, the javelin option, um, uh, bow option as well, and then finally, uh, a slinger option there. So and again, the bow and slingers can be up to a quarter of your total slinger, or sorry, uh, your skirmishers there. So 11, 12, and 12 points uh, respectively there. And again, uh, having some, uh, not just short range skirmishing, but again, some more uh, long range uh, options there for the skirmishers is not a bad way to go as well. And then finally, um, again, don't forget we have to, one in three divisions has to be freshly raised. So depending on what we uh, want to put in those freshly raised divisions, and maybe you're only uh, playing a game of like three divisions total. So one of them is going to have to be freshly raised. So uh, it's really just a question of what do you want to stick in there. Um, and, you know, you might be tempted to just put your, you know, your, your weakest units in there and just kind of... <laughs> keep them out of trouble as much as possible, or just use them as speed bumps and uh, ways to sort of redirect the enemy into bad positions. But um, something to keep in mind there too. So um, you may not want to invest too many uh, or too, too expensive units into that freshly raised, and especially if you're playing larger games as well. But then uh, what makes this list even more challenging to run, so we've had a lot of good to say so far, but um, the general and up to two commanders can have leadership eight, right? But again, uh, the bigger this game gets, right, we're basically running out of capable leaders. So then all the other commanders have leadership seven, right? Which again, eight's basically the standard across most uh, armies that we've seen or factions. Uh, seven, we've seen it a couple times. And uh, again, it, um, it gets pretty rough there. And we'll uh, certainly, uh, you know, uh, re require in most cases you being a little bit more cautious with your orders there if you want to get anything done. Certainly you can just throw caution to the wind and just get aggressive and hope you uh, you know pass those leadership uh, roles um, uh, and, and, and get something out of that, but um, you don't really have too much in the way of um, uh, sort of reliability built into the list. You know, we do have the Roman unit, uh, the legionaries that are drilled, but that's about it for drilled, right? Um, so there's no other tricks or anything like that. Uh, again, we have uh, our nice little uh, horse uh, light cavalry package there with Parthian and uh, Fane Flight, but that's about it really um, on the special rule side. And on top of it, we have that freshly raised requirement. So it's going to, um, you know, take uh, a lot of the oomph uh, out of the, uh, the the potential for this list here. So I know on the surface, it's got a lot of neat features. Um, if not, you know, just overflowing with... Uh, uh, power units and tons of um, uh, special rules, uh, but it just has these uh, this this very real drawback with the freshly raised uh, component. And then again, if it's in, getting into a bigger game, you're going to have some uh, weaker commanders there. So, um, but hey, that's what makes a fun list. It's certainly something a little bit different. Um, could look um, 
really nice on the tabletop too with um you can do a little bit of research and see you know what maybe uh this uh the pulmonary infection would have looked like um and certainly allows for some interesting painting again and hobby opportunities there but um uh, on the model side you know pretty much everything that is in this list is available um from multiple manufacturers um that being said um might be worth doing a little bit of kit bashing here and there wherever possible just to again sort of make your guys look a little bit different and unique um which make them really stand out but uh more or less is one that you could also just easily proxy with uh, sort of existing uh factions that are out there again um taking some from some of the other uh Middle Eastern type uh, factions that we've covered, uh, cataphracts we've seen uh, across some different factions, and of course the Roman legionaries and archers and so on, we can get a lot of mileage out of all that stuff. So uh, freshly raised, um, again, could be interesting to represent that somehow uh, model-wise and painting-wise, but um, yeah, so it's a neat combination of things here and just a, uh, an interesting look at a faction that's really just sort of a snapshot in the larger picture of Roman history here. So anyway, let us know what you guys think in the comments there. Um, hit us up with a uh, like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. We'll be moving on, as you can see, to the Middle Imperial Romans next um, and working our way through the rest of sort of antiquity into the Dark Ages um, in short order. Um, if you guys do want to support the channel a little bit more too, check out the link in the description there. Uh, if you head over to Warlord and pick anything up, that helps support the channel. And we appreciate everybody who's been doing that. So thanks so much again for hanging out, guys. We'll see you in the next one.